A community is mourning after a devastating and unexpected loss. A month after a massive fire, plans are unveiled for a new Bluegrass Stockyards. Deputies in Boyle County say they caught a woman selling sex online after she agreed to meet with an undercover deputy. This is WKYT News at 5.30. Good evening. We begin tonight with a tragic story. A community in central Kentucky is in mourning after an 11-year-old girl died from a massive heart attack earlier this week. Now, students at Baker Intermediate School are not only remembering Whitney, but also stepping up to help her family lay her to rest. WKYT's Michelle Chamberlain is in Clark County with our top story at 5.30. It was, it was devastating. Students and teachers of the school received tragic news yesterday. News that one student had suddenly died. It's a very sad situation. This was a beautiful little girl. Fifth grader Whitney Jackson went home from school Wednesday and told her family she wasn't feeling well. She had arm pain, became dizzy, and then suddenly went in and out of consciousness and then passed out. Later in the emergency room, doctors tried for over an hour to save Whitney. Sadly, the Clark County coroner pronounced the 11 year old dead of a massive heart attack from what he says is severe coronary artery disease. I've done this for a long time. Um, I don't think that I've ever seen a case quite like this at age 11. <laughs> I've seen it in elderly patients, but not, not in a young child like this. Gayhart says it appears Whitney had a genetic disease causing 100% blockage in three of her arteries. It's a punch to the gut. I mean, you don't expect anything like this, and you see them. One day, and then they're gone the next. And you come in and you see their desk, you see where they sat. And that's just a difficult situation. Whitney's locker has been cleared out, her belongings, schoolwork, and art to be given to her family. The sweet girl's family is on the hearts and minds of those at Baker Intermediate. This whole, this whole school is a family oriented school. Hundreds of students at Whitney's school all wore hats today, all in hopes to raise money for Whitney's family. We are well over. A thousand dollars. People were sending in, you know, quarters, dimes, nickels, tens, twenties, hundreds. I mean, it's been an out, you know, an outpouring of, of just comfort and, and support. In Clark County, Michelle Chamberlain, WKYT. Certainly hard to understand. The money raised at the school will help with Whitney's funeral and burial costs. There's also a GoFundMe page set up to help Whitney's family. In just one day, that page has raised more than $4,000. After last month's massive fire, owners of the Bluegrass Stockyards in Lexington are getting a second chance. And at a new location this morning, Mayor Gray announcing that the new stockyard will be built on Ironworks Pike near I-75 across from the Kentucky Horse Park. The facility will be paid for with incentives from the state. Jennifer Palumbo joins us at the live desk with more on this story. Jennifer? Sam, it's big news for the city of Lexington that Bluegrass Stockyards will stay in Lexington, but in that new location on Ironworks Pike next to I-75. The announcement came at a news conference with the mayor and firefighters who battled the three-alarm fire last month on Lyle Industrial Avenue. Other communities had tried to get the stockyards to move, but Chief Operating Officer Jim Akers said it made sense to rebuild in Fayette County because it's what's best for many of their farmers and many shareholders own land near the Kentucky Horse Park. The $200 million operation sees more cattle than any other stockyard east of the Mississippi. We've got value-added marketing programs, uh, facility design, animal well-being, and a multitude of other issues that we've got to think through at a level that hasn't been thought through in a long, long time because we've got the opportunity to put something in place here that will be here long after we're all gone. Construction crews will start working this summer. It's expected to take a year and a half to build the new facility. Akers said they had cheaper options, but chose Lexington because of the state's $540,000 in tax incentives. The business is key to the state's agricultural community. At its seven locations across the state and through online sales, they sell about $600 million in cattle each year. At the live desk, Jennifer Palumbo, WKYT. And you may be wondering about this question. City officials tell us they don't know what will happen with the old stockyards property on Lyle Industrial Avenue. 
An Elizabethtown man is charged with murder after a shooting at a fast food restaurant. Our county by county coverage at 5:30 begins in Hardin County. 27-year-old Joshua Ratliff is accused of shooting 22-year-old Ryan Burse inside the KFC Taco Bell on Buffalo Creek Drive about 6:30 last night. Burse was shot nine times in the back. Investigators caught Ratliff after a chase that involved several law enforcement agencies on I-65. We're not used to having these type of issues in this area, so uh, like I said, uh, it's just a shame that it happens. And I'm not just talking about here in Elizabethtown, but across our state, across our country. Both men were employees of the restaurant. Ratliff pled not guilty this morning. And in Laurel County, a woman has died two days after a bad accident. 78-year-old Bonnie Jones died last night at UK Hospital. She was hurt in a crash Tuesday morning. Deputies say the car she was riding in crashed into the back of another car that had stopped because of traffic. The driver of that car is still recovering from injuries at UK Hospital. An undercover investigation by two Kentucky Sheriff's Departments has exposed a prostitution ring. The Boyle and Lincoln County Sheriff's Departments arrested two women for prostitution and various drug charges. And they say that more arrests are expected. Victor Puente has the details on the investigation in this Crime Tracker report. In addition to the prostitution charges, both women are also facing charges for the drugs police say they found after those two were arrested. The investigation started in Lincoln County. Sheriff Kurt Folger told me his detectives contacted a woman who placed an ad online offering sex in exchange for money. So they started the, the conversation and was able to set up a time and a place to meet um, here in Danville for the services. Lindsay Sally's arrest citation says she began texting with deputies and they planned to meet at an apartment in Danville. That got the Boyle County Sheriff's Office involved and both agencies took part in the sting Thursday night. It's vital. Um, we, we work with the, with a lot of other surrounding counties. They say Sally told them she usually had three dates a day and was offering her services for $150 an hour. They arrested her for prostitution and several drug charges. They also arrested the woman renting that apartment, Patricia Beecraft. They say Sally told them Beecraft let her use the apartment for sex in exchange for food. They also say Beecraft had someone else's EBT card. They charged her with permitting prostitution false use of benefits, and several drug charges. Both women are in the Boyle County Detention Center. Technology is with any way in life, it's being more prevalent and taking a bigger role, and that's the same with crime. According to jail records, Beecraft also has a charge out of Marion County. Lebanon police say she shoplifted from a shoe store in January. In Boyle County, Victor Puente, WKYT. Beecraft's arrest record shows that deputies found Xanax and marijuana in her apartment. After a couple of days of rain and cold, it looks like warmer days are ahead for us. That's right. WKYT Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey just joining us now with a more on a weekend warm up. Yeah, oh, that sounds good. It rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? Uh, making our way into the weekend with some milder air today compared to the past few days. Still below normal, though, out there today. Uh, closing in on 50 for normals. 37 Covington, 30s across eastern Kentucky, though low 40s. Frankfurt Mountain Parkway corridor into the Lexington area where we're seeing more in the way of some sun. You can see who has the clouds. 35 into Prestonsburg, Ashland, the Maysville area, more clouds than some sun. Low 40s across the entire area right now. 41 popular Lexington, London, Somerset, into Richmond and Danville. Defender radar network, nothing going on across the Bluegrass State. Throw the clouds into the mix, a little more prominent across the north. Though we're watching the southwest, that's where the air this weekend is coming from, and that's some much better stuff that will roll into town, not only for our Saturday, but for our Sunday as well. As winds begin to crank up, those temperatures will take off as well. We'll talk about the 60s in the hour-by-hour -hour forecast when I come back in about 10 minutes. When the show you want to see is sold out, many people turn to the Internet. Unfortunately, so do scam artists. One father was eager to find Taylor Swift tickets for his daughters, and instead, he got a lesson on counterfeit tickets. You too. Adele. Taylor Swift. Some of the hottest concert tickets going these days. Taylor Swift tickets caught one father's eye when he found an ad on Craigslist. I came across this one posting where I thought there was really decent seats at a reasonable price. And, you know, I, I made an offer to buy them. And I, I was surprised. That I won. He doesn't want to show his face for fear of becoming a target for fraudsters, but he wants other parents to hear this story. 
The seller gave him a phone number. They texted and met to exchange the cash and tickets for the sold-out show. They'll take the cash and give you some sob story that their father's ill, their mother's ill, or they, they can't attend the concert and they're just giving it away for face value. The victim admits he let his guard down when he heard this story because it seemed normal. Plus, he knew his girls would be thrilled. They had their Taylor Swift shirts, and they, you know, they were listening to Taylor Swift. We took the train in, and they were listening to Taylor Swift songs on the way in, and, and they were just, uh, just so giddy and happy. But all that changed when the family handed their tickets to the usher at the turnstile, and they were counterfeits. It was heartbreaking watching my kids cry and break down tears um, because they couldn't go in. Postal inspectors say the counterfeit ticket scheme is growing in popularity, and consumers must be prepared. With Craigslist, it's a buyer beware type of website as opposed to other reputable uh, ticket sellers. And the buyer has to be very careful because anybody can post on Craigslist. I go through the companies. I go through Ticketmaster. I go through whatever uh, venue is selling that ticket. If it's a stadium, it's, you know, I don't, I, I would never buy or suggest to anyone buy tickets off of Craigslist or any of those outlets in the future. I know I will not. But the good news when the venue realized the family purchased fake tickets, they allowed them to buy some last-minute available tickets. It is moving day for one branch of the Lexington Library. The story in about five minutes. I'm Bill Bryant. Fayette County's property valuation administrator says there will be some immediate changes in the way some property is assessed. The bottom line is coming up. For all your hearth and grill needs, shop BarnhillChimney.com. Unclaimed freight notice this weekend at American Freight. Over 1,000 truckloads of living room furniture. Seven piece living room groups that include a sofa, love seat, coffee table, two end tables, and two designer lamps. You get all seven pieces from only $398 complete. Free layaway till tax refund. Same day delivery. Come to the Looney Docks this weekend only at American Freight in Lexington, 272 West New Circle Road, next to Walmart, across from Jalapenos. Phone 226 0008. Philip Pratt, a proud grandfather, a loving and caring family man, a hard-working small business owner, someone who knows how to grow jobs and change the landscape in Frankfurt. Philip Pratt will hold government accountable responsibly, fight Obama's crippling government overreach on our agriculture economy, and preserve our Kentucky heritage in Owen and Scott County. On Tuesday, March 8th, vote Philip Pratt for state representative. Steak? I thought we were on a budget. I can't eat another fish stick. I hear you. How about a vacation? I thought we were on a budget. If we book on Allegiant, we can totally afford it. The sun, the surf, we all deserve a break. Listen to your wallet. Kids all set? Yeah. What should I order? It's so beautiful here. I love the sun. The weather is perfect. My tan looks amazing. Ready to eat? Listen to your wallet and visit Allegiant.com now. They say life gets better the older you get, and time becomes more valuable. Time to spend with family, time to try new things, time to have fun. At Kroger, you can have your prescriptions filled while you shop. So it's easy to save money and time with your Kroger Pharmacy. And you can get back to the things you love. Be heart smart. Your Kroger Pharmacist can help you understand your heart health numbers, your medications, and so much more. See your Kroger Pharmacist today. All across America, families are coming back to Time Warner Cable for a whole new experience. We came back for internet speed so fast, even the kids are impressed. Oh, she's impressed. We're catching up on movies and shows on demand just as fast as we can watch them. TWC's home Wi-Fi is so strong, we can use all our devices at the same time. Come back today. You'll get 30 meg internet, TV, phone, and more for $89.99 a month. And ask how you could get a $300 reward card. Call now. A story from our partners at the Lexington Herald Leader over tax breaks given to farms is causing quite a stir in Frankfurt. And after last night's fierce debate, the gloves are off in the race for the Republican presidential nomination. Bill Bryant has it all in today's bottom line. 
Good evening. Changes are coming fast as a result of some watchdog journalism by the Lexington Herald Leader, which uncovered that many large lots are getting a huge tax break intended for farms. But the man in charge of setting the value of property in Fayette County says the laws are confusing and unclear about what is to be considered an actual farm and what land is not. On a taping of WKYT's Kentucky Newsmakers, Fayette Property Valuation Administrator David O'Neill says he will take steps at once to restrict strict farm preservation tax breaks, and he's seeking other clarifications. We're going to be asking for a direct legal opinion from the Department of Revenue clearing up this question of agriculture use versus agriculture capability, because that really does go to the heart of the issue. That, that matter needs to be clarified. And then I'm hopefully working with uh, legislators to get some legislation passed and, and, and shore up these statutes. And you can see the full interview with O'Neill and hear from the executive director of the Kentucky Republican Party about next week's statewide Republican caucuses on Kentucky Newsmakers. It airs Sunday morning at 6 on WKYT. It repeats Sunday at 10 a.m. on the CW Lexington. Set your DVR or catch it then. Marco Rubio waging a fresh verbal assault against Donald Trump on this day after he and Ted Cruz tag-teamed the Republican frontrunner on the debate stage in Houston. Rubio repeatedly called the billionaire businessman a con artist today during a round of TV interviews. The takedown effort comes just four days before Super Tuesday. And on the Democratic side, Hillary Clinton has been crisscrossing South Carolina ahead of tomorrow's primary in the Palmetto State for Democrats. Ben Bernie Sanders has spent much of his time in other states this week, with polls showing him trailing Clinton in South Carolina. A former Lexington council member and well-known barber on the city's south side has died. Roy Durbin was a barber for more than 50 years, and he owned Clay's Mill Barbershop. Razor Roy served on the Lexington Council for 13 years and was a coach and leader in the Clays Mill Youth Baseball League. Visitation Sunday and the funeral Monday for Roy Durbin, who was 83. Bill Bryant, WKYT. The Eagle Creek branch of the Lexington Library closed its doors today to transition to a new facility. Librarians spent the day cleaning out closets, bookshelves, and packing more than 60,000 items in preparation for the move. The new branch will have twice as much floor space, more meeting rooms, and a drive through book drop. The assistant manager at the Eagle Creek branch says the Hamburg area population has exploded in recent years, forcing this branch to expand. The Hamburg area has been growing for years and years, and the library's 15-year um, plan had always meant for there to be a new branch in this area to serve the, the huge explosion in population. Um, and finally, finally, we've gotten um, a building for that area. The new library is just down the road from Eagle Creek on Palumbo Drive. The new branch will open on March 15th. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Overall, dealing with a nice, nice day across central Kentucky. Eastern Kentucky, we can do a little work on the forecast. We'll get there over the next couple of days. Sunshine, though, making an appearance this afternoon, slowly but surely into many areas. At least a partly sunny sky that's uh, showing up on our Mountain Parkway cam, Lexington, Frankfurt, Covington, a little more in the way of clouds. That's why your temperature is cooler than everybody else. Can you pick out where the clouds are? Mid and upper 30s across much of central and eastern Kentucky. Get into the bluegrass region west, low 40s with some sunshine. Defender radar network, nothing going on across Kentucky. We like to keep it that way. How does your Saturday look? Tomorrow afternoon, chilly and then sunshine. Temperatures will hit the low 50s. Three day threat track, nothing tomorrow. Winds are going to be a player on Sunday. And then by the time we hit Monday, we're talking about the potential for a shower or two still on the windy side during that time. And that's with a cold front that will be right on top of the region. How about the weekend? Hour by hour forecast. One more little bank of clouds coming through the area late tonight, early tomorrow morning. Rest of your day tomorrow, we should hit the low 50s. By the time we go into the day on Sunday, thermometers upper 30s to low 40s. Hello, 60s. We missed you, 60s, low 60s at that coming up for Sunday afternoon. Here's our weak cold front that by the time we hit 11 o'clock on Sunday is right on top of central Kentucky. Not a lot of juice with that. More winds than rain. Still, though, a shower is a possibility. Those winds gusting up ahead of that front, 40 to 45 miles per hour. Here's the seven-day forecast, 51 tomorrow. Let's do it better than that, 64 for your Sunday. We roll into March with a big storm system. Rolling into town late Tuesday, 
showers, thunderstorms, and then the potential for a little wintry weather to follow that up with a big drop in temperatures. So I guess March technically coming in like a line, maybe? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a thundering line? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a threat for Tuesday. At least it means it'll go out like a lamb. <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. First, a live look at Lexington rush hour traffic flow in real time this afternoon. A couple of collisions impacting us. One is on Heronsburg Road near Beaumont Center. That crash there impacting outbound Heronsburg, approaching Pasadena to get past that point. Then on the north side, there's a collision. It's on New Circle, and it looks like we're still paying both directions for that one. Congestion trying to get past uh, that scene. Now, as far as the drive times are concerned, to Nicholasville, it's about normal. To Versailles, no problems past the airport, and we're okay toward Mount Sterling. Now back in the studio. A transient senior is shooting for a milestone tomorrow, Rob. Caitlin Smith out of Perry Central trying to reach 2,000 points in her career. We'll hear from her. And a tough situation for Isaac Humphreys and the Cats last weekend. Now, Cal is looking for more on the court from the freshmen. Stay with us. Sports is next. Tonight, we got no witnesses. An innocent man's life. We got no leads. Hangs in the balance. He says he didn't do it. We believe him. Hawaii 5 0. Then, Madam Speaker. It sounds so good when you say it. Police and politics don't mix. My people risk their lives every day. My people don't trust the police. When Whoopi Goldberg guest stars, she has muscle. So do I. Let the fireworks begin. New Blue Bloods after Hawaii 5 0. CBS Tonight. I'm John Morgan. For almost 30 years, we've had the opportunity to help you at one of your most desperate hours. An accident takes seconds to occur, but the injuries, loss of income, and medical bills can last a long time, even a lifetime. Our job is to make sure that your justice compensates you for your pain and suffering and protects your family for the rest of your life. Remember, I'm not just a lawyer, I'm your lawyer. Morgan & Morgan, for the people. Building the only trucks with the best torque, best payload, best towing, and best horsepower takes guts. Icing out the competition, that's the glory. Get a great deal during Ram Truck Month. Now, returning FCA US lessees get 11,000 in total values on the purchase of a 2016 Ram 1500 Bighorn Crew Cab. Value City Furniture presents how to get inspired. First, get inspired. Okay, that's not doing it. Go out, look around, shop the boutiques. Get up, Carl. Find something you love. Oh. When you're ready to buy, head to Value City Furniture, where you can always find furniture just like at the boutiques, but at prices that will make you much more comfortable. Perfect. And that's how to buy the perfect piece at Value City Furniture. Kentucky schools are not failing. We can't be failing if more students are graduating from high school, more students are making proficient advance in the state mandated testing. We have successes in our school every single day. Whether students love or hate science, I'm going to work with them to make sure that they get what they need from my class to be successful once they leave my class. Come see the awesome work our students are doing and you'll see success. Thanks for your help with my homework, Dad. Anytime. You need to work hard and get good grades. Yeah, but have you opened a college savings account yet? Well... You can with the Kentucky Education Savings Plan Trust. Any earnings are tax-free. If you use the money for qualified expenses... You've been talking to Grandpa again, haven't you? Sure. He wants to help. But you have to open an account first, okay? Okay. Now, can we talk about my bedtime? Start saving for college today. More at kysaves.com slash today. When big news breaks, be the first to know. Download the WKYT News app and turn on push alerts. Breaking news at your fingertips when you need to know what's going on. I'm WKYT's Miranda Combs and I stand for Kentucky. Isaac Humphrey speaking for the first time today about what happened last weekend at Texas A&M. And as you know, Humphrey slamming the ball on the floor led to a technical and the Cats ended up losing the game in overtime. John Calipari said today everyone's moved beyond it. Of course, it was hardest on Humphreys. It was about 24 hours. I mean, obviously I was thinking about it and I couldn't get away from it, like on social media and stuff like that. Um, but I kind of just shut myself 
shot a shot that sort of stuff off and just kind of dealt, dealt with it by myself and with the pain and stuff like that. We're so far by that. I mean, um, he, uh, last game, he had a chance to get six rebounds and he got two. And that's not going to keep him on the floor, especially with Alex back. So, you know, he's, he knows what he has to do. He's uh, first one in, he runs in there, and, and Kenny beats the crap out of him. And he loves it. He smiles about it. We've got some other guys in this back hallway. Isaiah hiding. They kind of peek around the corner. Are they out there yet? You know. And Cal referring there to his associate coach, Kenny Payne, who handles the big men. Next up, it is Vanderbilt tomorrow afternoon down in Nashville. Tip-off is at 4 o'clock. You'll see it right here. Immediately following the game, Wildcat wrap-up. All the highlights and post-game reaction only on your home for UK sports, WKYT. The Trancy Lady Pioneers in the semifinals of a Heartland Conference tournament. Senior guard Caitlin Smith on the verge of history. The senior out of Perry Central needs just 24 points to become the first women's player to reach 2,000 in her career. For Smith, the record is a secondary goal. That would be a, a big accomplishment, but I think more so than that, I really just like to keep the season going. So whether I have to score 20 or two per game, it really doesn't matter to me as long as we keep winning as long as we can. I, mean, I think that's the most amazing thing about her as a shooter is it looks the same every single time, whether she's shooting a three, a pull-up jump shot. And to be able to watch that you know, and start to think about how are there different ways that I can get her in the offense to just get a shot up, uh, it's pretty exciting. And Triple Crown winner American Farrow about to become a dad for the first time. Coolmore's Ashford Stud saying today that untouched talent is in full to American Farrow. The announcement comes two weeks after the 12 year old mare was bred to Farrow. If all goes well, the first of uh, many offspring of Farrow is only about 11 months away. Coming up in the next half hour, the hot hand of Jamal Murray. Stay with us as we continue after the break.